Welcome to this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. Today we're going to do a little rehash after Thanksgiving because we finally got through the Thanksgiving holiday and it's just The Wolf and I today and we thought we'd kind of go through what our Thanksgiving was like and all the stuff associated with that and maybe actually grab a bite to eat. Mm, what, maybe. what were you thinking of eating? I don't know. But first, let's talk about Thanksgiving. Right. So so uh, I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that, that, you I cel- celebrate Thanksgiving. that you celebrate Thanksgiving, right? Because, Why? I mean, everybody over here, we, part of what we're giving thanks for is fleeing the British, mm. right? So isn't that kind of something that is a problem with you, you know, kind of thinking about Thanksgiving, you know, it, you people were the ones we were trying to get away from. Not really, because oh. I look at it like, just like we sent all the convicts and the criminals to Australia. Right. Um, I don't think too many people tried to stop the people going to America. I think it was a bunch of troublemakers, basically. So it's like, oh, that ship's leaving with a bunch of people. It's like, okay, just let it go. Let it right. Go. Yeah, I think well, it's that and type scenario. So it was troublemakers and yeah. it was religious fanatics, yeah. right? And so basically you were trying to kick them out. You already found where to put the criminals mm. in Australia. Yeah. So it was kind of cleansing the country, yeah. basically. So mm-hmm. in England, when the U.S. is celebrating Thanksgiving – what do y'all do over there? Nothing. Or do you just, yeah, basically it's, it's, a, nothing it's, it's a nothing day. Well, there's no actual equivalent of Thanksgiving in England, mainly because the weather's crap. And so you don't really have much to be thankful for. That's true. So there's a very negative outlook. So I think if you had Thanksgiving, you'd get a lot of people complaining that they don't want to have to be positive on Thanksgiving day. And plus like British people aren't really big into huge family get togethers. Like in, in America, it's like every holiday, it's family traveling thousands of miles to be together. To be honest, in England, if they live like more than 20 minutes away, you're going to give it a miss. Ah, uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. I I had a, a good friend of mine who lives over on the East Coast, and he happens to be Jewish. Mm. And he had a person at work come up to him and say, so what do you do on Thanksgiving since you're Jewish? And he was completely confused because mm. he said, well, it's not a religious holiday. It's an American holiday. So it has nothing to do with religion. It's not like, you know, Jews typically go to the movies and eat Chinese food on Christmas, right? But Thanksgiving, they eat just like we do. I mean, maybe kosher, but still, they celebrate the holiday just like we do. Right. And the poor ignorant soul that actually came up to my Jewish friend and said, well, what do you do on Thanksgiving since Jews don't celebrate Christmas? It's like, I don't even know how to answer that. I kind of felt bad for him. And he told me in, I think he's probably in his late forties, early fifties. He said, that is the second time in his life that somebody has asked him that. And he was Mm -hmm. completely off guard, but it just so happened to be, at this Thanksgiving. Well, it's kind of strange that you get family relatives that you haven't really seen for most of the year together at Thanksgiving. Because I would have thought if you were that thankful for them, you would have made some effort to see them at other times during the year. True. So it's Thanksgiving and you're not really that thankful for them being there. Otherwise, you'd arrange something at another time. Yeah, no, that's true. But, you know, a lot of people are out of town, you know, far away. They have their jobs and everything, and now you get into this kind of holiday travel season when they all decide that we're going to have these family get-togethers and pretend like we really care about each other, right. even though we see each other once or twice well, a year. Bud, Budweiser released this like super huge pack of beer or piss, whatever you want to call it, and um, it was, I had like a hundred cans in it, and I think it was specifically for Thanksgiving. Wow. Um, and my brother-in-law said that that's just for dad so he can like put up with all his relatives. Well, like, no, that's what, you, no, that's what you sit outside and you literally, as my phone is ringing and buzzing on the table, that's what you literally sit outside while you're smoking the turkey that keeps you outside. And then you just put it in a cooler right next to the smoker. So you don't have to go in. What the hundred cans of Budweiser? Yeah. Do you, think, do you think Budweiser tastes better lukewarm? 
I mean, cold. I don't, I don't like the taste of Budweiser. Well, neither do I. That's why I'm asking if it tastes no. better when it's lukewarm as opposed know. to cold. I don't know. That's really not a taste test I want to walk through. Which is I lack, don't really, it's a lack of taste test, really, yeah. isn't it? It's Budweiser has this kind of weird taste to it, and yeah. it always has for me. And I've always hated Bud Light. Mm. However, uh, Budweiser and Bud Light, if you'd like to be a huge sponsor of the podcast, and, we'll consider uh, it. Yeah, we we will stop as talking long as we bad don't about to you. Drink it. Yeah. Well, it, have you seen those little magnetic wraps that you can put around cans? Maybe we could put a good beer, and then we could put oh, the right. magnetic yeah. wrap around. I mean, even a Coke or something like that. You know, you could actually put the magnetic wrap around the can, and then people wouldn't know the difference. Right. I mean, nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm. right? So how many people did you have? Well, I guess, first of all, let's back up. Did you have Thanksgiving at your place, or did you have to go somewhere? Oh, I wouldn't go anywhere for it. Okay. No, so, it's at home. It's just right. uh, me, my wife, my two stepdaughters, and one of my stepdaughter's boyfriends. That was it. Just oh. the Your boy one there? No. Oh, okay. He's not big on Thanksgiving. He doesn't really like much of the food there. He'd just sit there eating Skittles or popcorn or something. Like that. Or goldfish. Or goldfish. He likes his he's, goldfish. He's kind of off them a little bit at the moment. Really? Yeah, he well, goes through kind of periods. Sucks. Yeah, it's mainly Skittles at the moment he's got okay. a thing for. Well, Skittles, and fr- Skittles and fries. Yeah. French fries, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right, so who cooked? Uh, Cindy, my wife, cooked most of the food. Lexi made some dessert. Uh, made it or went to the store no, and picked it up? No, she actually made it. Okay. Um, then Kendall, her boyfriend Christian and me, we didn't do anything but eat it. So That's the best part of Thanksgiving. And the dog, obviously. Oh. Mia have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, Mia did have a great Thanksgiving because I fed her a lot of food under the table. Wasn't mm. supposed to, but she was there and she's had, old. Had some chocolate? No, she no. Oh. She's been eating my earplugs recently, though, so I have to keep the bedroom door closed because she keeps jumping up on the bed, getting to the nightstand and eating my earplugs. Mm. Oh. Funnily enough, I haven't seen them come out in a poop, so that's kind of strange because they're, like, green. You'd figure that would stick out a little bit. Yeah, but is it more strange that you're going through her poop looking yeah. for your earplugs? Not really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I smoked two turkeys and a ham. Uh, turned out fantastic. Mm. Love my Traeger, and Traeger, please sponsor us. It, please sponsor us. I, I've talked about the Traeger before. I love that thing, but I do have a problem with the Traeger. Every year I smoke turkeys, and I always follow this basic recipe, and I know as far as time is concerned that it's going to take me a lot longer because I've normally had to feed my old school grill with wood and the temperature fluctuates and all this. And I kept reading on the Traeger app that you need to smoke it for like two or three hours and then increase the temperature and go for like three or four more hours and then you're done. Mm. I didn't believe the app. I was wrong. So I started really early in the morning like I normally do. And according to the app, I would have been done about 1230. So at 1230, I go out and check the temperature. Turkeys are done. So I went into the wife and I said, well, I know I was targeting for like 4, 430 for everything to be done like I normally do, but turkeys are already done. Like the Traeger did exactly what it was supposed to do. So bad on me, good on Traeger. And then next year, I know I don't have to wake up so early. So why did you make two turkeys? Because your wife and your kids look like they live in North Korea because they're all super skinny. Right. So why are you doing two turkeys? Well, we had 14 people oh, at the house. all right. That's a lot. And so the last, like, three years, I've done one turkey, and it was just devoured. There was no leftovers. Mm. And, of course, one of the best parts of Thanksgiving, right, is the leftovers. You know, you go in, you sit down, you watch the Cowboys game, and if you're a lunch Thanksgiving family, you know, then you get you a turkey sandwich later on in the evening. Or if you're a dinner Thanksgiving family, that Friday you have your turkey sandwich, whatever. And I wasn't able to do that. So I said, okay, 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do two turkeys. That way I've got leftovers. Mm. I didn't know how many people we were going to have. So even though I did two turkeys, zero leftovers Mm. of turkey. So I still didn't get that turkey sandwich on friday yeah we had a real, very very frustrating that i didn't get that yeah i cut the meat off the turkey and i had like a pretty decent size like pound sandwich bag of turkey and uh me and mia the dog about 11 20 11 30 monday night we just heated it up and sat and ate and it, it was gone yeah, yeah my wife was like asleep or something so me and the dog decided to finish off the turkey and the mashed potato and the stuff in so I did a ham on the trigger also. We had leftover ham. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, at least I got the leftover ham, right? Friday morning, I'm playing Forza. I don't know if you played Forza I have. yet I or keep, not. I keep, I keep playing it. It keeps saying, Max has discovered this many roads on Forza Horizon 5, right? Yeah. Wonderful free game from Microsoft on the Game Pass. Absolutely. Um, yeah, awesome game. I'm... I haven't played it that much because I'm still playing a lot of four because that was set in England, number four. And this one's, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What's this one set in Mexico? Yeah, it's Mexico. Yeah, your wife should love it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah she does. She likes yeah. watching it. Watching makes her feel at home. and stuff yeah. makes her feel homesick. But I, I wake up Friday morning and I'm playing Forza and the boys come downstairs and they're like, hey, you know, we want breakfast. I said, how about ham and eggs? We have the ham, right? I'll warm the ham up, make some eggs. Friday morning, all the ham's gone. Like we went through all mm. the ham. The wife woke up after the boys, didn't get any leftover ham. I'm still paying for that. Mm. No. So you but have it was no good. leftovers left from I, that. I, I am completely out. We somehow made the exact amount of food that we needed. Mm. Uh, green beans all gone mashed potatoes all gone the only thing that we really had left over was cranberry sauce but it was literally still in the can because we're those people we just open the can and dump it on the plate yeah so the leftover is the can sitting in the pantry yeah so it, i mean literally you looked at the fridge after thanksgiving and we did that Hey, we got to get everything out of the fridge. We mm. got to eat all these other leftovers. We got to make room and all this. My fridge is bare. It mm. looks like a Russian grocery store right, right now. Am. Yeah. Or just a normal, regular well, grocery store in some states. True. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's not much, not much really been going on in the whole digesting department since Thanksgiving. I think my wife decided, well, right, I've made that big meal. Now we can just live on. Uh, what is left in the freezer and refrigerator? So I've been licking a bunch of ice packs, mm. which were stored in there, eating some not, of my not son's those popsicles. Blue, not those blue ones that yeah. are like chemical. Yeah, just uh. the outside of the packaging, though, just make the tongue feel. Cool. Oh, okay, the condensation. Yeah, take the away outside. the hunger pangs. Yeah, type stuff. no, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes so sense. I'm, I haven't made a good curry recently, so I've had nothing nice and spicy. So well, there's no such thing as a good curry. Yeah, there is nice spice in it. No, yep. I disagree. Yeah. So that's it then. So this is lunch. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've we kind of been behind and kind of took some time off, and we decided to come in the studio and try to catch up on some production work, and we figured, hey, we'll talk a little bit about Thanksgiving and all that and then grab some lunch. And we really don't have any leftovers or anything to eat. No, no. But what we do have is a company sent us some honey. And so we're going to try is that this euphemism? honey. Uh, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Continue. I'm confused. Honey. Dear. Honey's. Yeah. Darling. Company sent us some honey. What What are the terms of endearment in England? Are they different than honey, darling, dear, sweetie, baby? It, are there... Are there terms of endearment that we're missing in the U.S. that are used over there that maybe we should resurrect? Uh, it's pretty similar. It's just preceded normally with a cuss word. So oh, yeah, like bloody honey. Yeah, that sounds nasty yeah. though. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> uh, with all that said, so uh, we reached out to a company that makes a special kind of honey, 
And I know that I had talked to you about this and this was like a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And I said, Hey, there's this company that makes this honey. Uh, we want to try this out. And you said, yeah, okay. Not a big honey eater. I'm like, oh, I'm not either, but I like honey. I mean, it's good. No, I like honey. I eat honey quite regularly. And so we finally got our bottle of honey Mm. and we want to try it, but we had a problem with this because we were trying to figure out what to eat the honey with because you told me you normally just put honey on a spoon. Yeah. Is that an English thing that over in England y'all just eat honey on a spoon? No. I or just, is that just a weird wolf thing that's, that that's what you do? Yeah, the latter. Yeah. It's uh I eat honey just for the sake of eating honey because of its health properties. I do like the taste of honey, but it's so sweet and because I'm not really I don't really have a sweet tooth. Right. Um I just can't think of anything to put it on which I'd actually enjoy because anything it would go with, I probably wouldn't eat most of the time anyway, let alone put honey on it. So I just enjoy a honey by itself. Yeah. And there are a lot of, you know, benefits and, you know, there's a big history with honey, mm. right? And honey's one of those few things that doesn't go bad. Yeah. Like you can put it in the pantry and find it like 10 years later because you put a bunch of stuff in front of it and like, oh, hey, we got some honey. The only things I could think of when we were texting back and forth and saying, Hey, you know, when this honey comes in, what are we going to try it with? And I think we went what two days before we texted each other back because it took us that long to try to figure out what to do besides putting it on a spoon. Mm. Right. And of course, Sopa P is from ponchos. That's how I always remember eating the majority of my honey. But then I later found out you're not actually putting honey on the Sopa P is it's like this mix that ponchos gives you. Yeah. You know, so, well, it's, of, so it's not the yeah. same thing. Well, a lot thing. of honey, a lot of honey you buy in stores is just basically sugar. You know, to get the good raw, unfiltered stuff, you need to spend a few more dollars to get the health benefits. Otherwise, you the might real well just, honey. Yeah. Otherwise, you might just sit and eat spoonfuls of sugar because it's not yeah. really good for you. Basically. Yeah. So, what we have, though, is, and let me, uh, Take the take, headphones off first. Uh, yes. Because I've seen let, this cartoon and how I it know. works out. Yeah, let me take a minute, and I'm going to walk over there and grab this bottle of honey. Do you want me to read the ingredients? Yeah, well, so it, this is called Ghost Honey from Heart Soul Heat, and this is the Sweet Heat Honey. Right, well... The reason I asked if you wanted me to read the ingredients is because it said there's only three ingredients. So I thought was to get get me off the hook for doing too much work on this. But right, right, 100% American pure raw honey. Uh, great words I can't pronounce. Behut Jolokia backslash ghost pepper and vinegar. So okay, so hang on, let me take a look. Soul at that. and heat. So basically, yeah, it's honey and then this pepper. Yeah. And then they put a little bit of vinegar in yeah. there. Well, I love ghost pepper infused things. Right. Okay. So here's one of our problems. Right. It literally says on the label what we should try this on. I never follow advice on yeah, the side of the products. It says great on pizza, fried chicken, mm. cheese plates, ice cream. Hmm. I can see ice cream, right. fresh fruit, and grilled meats. Hmm. Huh. So anyway, this is made in Minneapolis. Uh, HeartSoulHeat.com is where you find it. So I oh wait. So I know you like hot stuff. Hmm. Like that's one of your big deals. Yeah. And you've talked to me before about the Scoville hmm. scale. So this is. 10,000 on mm. the Scoville scale. And yeah. it's got like, it's got two little deals. Let's make sure we do that. So it's got like two little fire things out of five on this. So 10,000 on the Scoville scale. Is that hot? Is that not hot? What would you say? Um, when you get people who say they don't like spicy foods, yeah, that 10,000 be too much for somebody who doesn't like spicy. Because some people say they don't like spicy food, and yet they will eat something slightly spicy. 
this would not be the slightly spicy. This would be more of the I like spicy food type person saying okay. you this wouldn't get past the uh I don't like spicy food type people. I got you. So I asked you to bring something for us to try the honey. Yeah. I'm guessing you brought spoons. I did bring spoons. Okay, yeah. Okay. So we're yeah. literally just going to try this on spoons. Because so. I, bought, I bought my son like about 50 plastic spoons to take to school for his apple sauce that oh. he takes in. So, All right, so. we do All have right. a plethora of yeah, spoons. Yeah. Well, grab us some spoons. We're going to open this up. Oh. oh, there's a quality seal here. Hang on. I got to take the quality seal off. Knife or something. I think I can. Kind of smell the heat there. You just have to trust me. This hasn't been used. No, no. All right, so here we go. Am I serving you? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So I like spicy food more than you. So if this is super dangerous. We can just go on my testimony, and you can just walk. Oh, right, you need to. Is that good? Yeah. Is that too much? No, it's good for a taster. No, good for a taster. Oh, okay. All right. So. It, now, it, remember, not everybody's watching this on YouTube. There are right. people listening, so you're going to have to describe. I'm smelling know, it. Well, yes, you're smelling it. Yeah. So what does it smell like? Honey. Oh. I don't think at the moment you can smell any slight variance because of the ghost pepper. Though. Right. Hold on. Hang on. Hang on. Don't taste it yet. Let me, are we going to taste I'm, it at the I'm, same time? No, I'm catching up here. All right. Yeah, yeah. it does smell like honey. It smells like honey. Right. Yeah. All right, I'm just turn it over and just yeah. Okay, I'll let you go first, and it's got a kick. Ooh, <laughs> that has uh, got a kick. It's nice though. I don't no, know. If that, I'd mi- I don't know if I'd mix it with ice cream, but it's nice. It does have a kick. <laughs> yes, it does. Hold on, let me just uh, yeah grab the uh, <laughs> coffee here. Good kick. I mean, it, it, no, it's a good kick, it, but it does kind of kick you. I can actually think now of putting this on pizza because I've had some, um, right? You know, some of those Hawaiian style ones where or they like have a little put bit a different little flavors, buffalo sauce yeah. or something on there. But Ooh, I wonder if there'd be a way to make <laughs> ghost pepper honey wings where you could use it as a wing type. I don't know why. Because you know, you can get honey sauces, honey barbecue sauces, yeah. and stuff. So why not ghost pepper honey? But don't they make like honey barbecue sauce, obviously with honey. So yeah. could you maybe take this and make a barbecue sauce mm. with this? Like a honey barbecue yeah. sauce, but now it's kind of huh. spicy. Yeah. I might try making some wings with this actually and uh, yeah. see what they like. Then we'll bring them back on the show and we'll eat them during an episode. Now, honestly, so it tastes really good when you first taste it, right? Yeah. And then it hits you with the heat. Yeah. But now, it, the heat's already gone. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Well, you can still kind of feel it a little oh, bit. Yeah, me too. Nice I, I feel it a little bit. I know I just ate something spicy, but it's not like I want to run and get a glass of milk and put the fire out in my mouth. Yeah. Right. On oh. today's edition of products which are on their last day of safe eating, I've bought in some tortillas, which oh. I figured we could try Okay, so on. let's try it on some tortillas here. Yeah, it's literally Best Buy, November 29th. Oh, what is today? Uh, the 30th. Oh, I may okay. have got my days wrong, but last night when I put this in the plastic bag, it was still deemed edible. So. Right. Uh, but hopefully I think the we'll honey will take the taste away from any... Well, if the honey doesn't, the ghost peppers in it's going to yeah. kill anything that we've got going here, so... Right. You prepare your own because I don't want to... Well, sure. Okay. I did oh, even oh, you brought eat. a knife as well. I thought we were going to reuse the spoon no. to spread the honey that on That was going to be my go-to method. I have spread... I've made sandwiches and put paste on with a spoon oh. before. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. So why did you decide to bring tortillas? I mean, I, I was honestly thinking about, like, biscuits. I don't have any biscuits. Well, we could have stopped somewhere and got a biscuit. Could have done. But now, we had some now, tortillas and a, which needed to be eaten. Well, so. yeah, but and when I say biscuit, I mean like an American biscuit because you called biscuits cookies sweet, over there. Yeah, sweet cookies are yeah. biscuits over there. All right, so that's all you're going to put on there? Yeah, to begin with. 
Yeah, and then what are you going to do? Like roll that? It's not that much. I know. Well, you should have. But you should have brought a bowl. Well, no, this is I the would thing, rather. You're going to put more on yours, and we're going to see how much is too much. Oh. No, I was thinking more along the lines that I would rather have put the honey in a bowl and then rolled the tortilla up and dipped it in that. Yeah, we need a bowl for that. No, we don't have a bowl. You know, actually, the sad thing is we're rolling these tortillas up on this table and we've never cleaned the top of this table. Ever. Yeah, so. In like a year and two yeah. or three months of recording, so, this table's so, never been cleaned. Right. So what I'm going to do is opposite of you. I'm just going to squirt some on the end. This tastes here. really, really good in this tortilla. Actually, hang on. You you, <laughs> you already squirt uh, you already had some of these tortillas. No. That was brand new that you just opened? Yeah. Well, I need to take a bite of tortilla without this Two. so I can discern the difference. All right. All right, it tastes like a tortilla. Yeah. Just wanted to double Does, check. It doesn't taste like it's a day past its best to eat and buy date. No. All right, here we go. So. It tastes really good in the tortilla. I'd actually eat this in a tortilla. Wow. Okay, it's better when you eat it with something. Hmm. Agree? Yeah, do what Disagree? I did. Just put it in the middle. It tastes put really good. Put it in good. the middle? Yeah, okay. it tastes really good in there. It tastes um, it's similar-ish to a cinnamon bagel in terms of the kind of taste, overall taste to it in a way, I think. It tastes more kind of like cinnamon in with a bagel. Sorry, in with the uh, tortilla. Is that too much? Not enough? Am I doing this right? There's only one way to find out. Oh, fair enough. <clears throat> mm, it is good, though. Ghost honey is mm. bold and flavorful, but will not overpower your favorite foods, according to this bottle mm. here. Uh, I'll have to get my friend Danny the Greek to try this because he loves ghost honey stuff. Uh, sorry, ghost pepper things and Carolina Reapers and all that. I think, I, he's, I think he's got some ghost pepper toothpaste. Hmm. Ah, it is good. Mm. No, it's really good. Mm -mm. Only sixty calories per serving. What what does it consider a serving? A uh, tablespoon. Spoonful? Tablespoon. Yeah, this is teaspoon. teaspoon. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So not that bad. I like how you put your spoon down on something to avoid it getting dirty when we've literally just eaten a tortilla off a table which hasn't well, been yeah. cleaned in a minimum well, of yeah, 15 and, months. And, yeah, and you put yours there mm. off camera. But uh, seriously, though, I mean, the ghost honey, very good. This is the sweet heat. Uh, I guess what we should have done... Let's see if they have any other products was with a like higher a, heat factor yeah, like and a, different flavors. A, a little bit of research on the company, mm. but you know, we never do that, right? Yeah. So I actually brought up their website here, heartsoulheat.com. Free shipping on all orders over 35 bucks, so that's good. Uh, playing to the Amazon game, it's always $35 for mm. some reason. I don't know who decided that was the magic amount for free shipping but good for that dude uh so there's ghost honey sweet heat is that 12 ounce this is because it talks about a 12 ounce yeah bottle. 12 ounce yeah yeah because you can buy like one 12 ounce bottle or you can buy three 12 ounce bottles and if you buy three 12 ounce bottles, they're 10% cheaper. Mm. So that's kind of cool. Uh, oh, here, Founder mm. Story. You know, you being British, mm. I think you need to read this because you're dropping honey on the uh, table. I'm making the table dirty. All right. So you right. need to. So I'm reading to, the Founder Story. Yeah. Right. You need to read the story while I finish my tortilla. Yeah. You know those commercials for. Um, those uh, phone cleaners, like under UV light, so it gets rid of bacteria and all that stuff, or those wipes. Right. Yeah, you need to buy some, mate. Yeah. I am a prolific home chef who is passionate about bringing extraordinary, bold flavors to everyday foods. As someone with a big entrepreneurial spirit and roots in Mexican food culture, 
I want to incorporate the best of my family's legacy into some new products that I could share with everyone. I started homesteading and eventually pursued apiculture because of my innate passion for organically sourced ingredients and rich flavors. The byproducts of my beekeeping endeavors inspired me to experiment with infusing bold spicy flavors with honey's well-loved flavor profile. I'm not into heat that will hurt you, but I want to open up your taste buds to another level. And there we have a photo of the dude. For those of you who are listening, he has a hat and a mustache and wow. some glasses. And he looks like he's wearing a t-shirt and it's in black and white. So, so she, basically she, just like you, <coughs> except you don't have glasses on. Or uh, or a beard. Wow. Well, you said mustache though. Yeah. Mine's from not shaving. His looks deliberate. Um, no, definitely good. I would definitely eat that on tortillas and uh, probably bagels. And I think I'm going to try and make a bagels. sauce out of it. Oh, yeah. I never even thought about bagels. Yeah, make a plain bagel taste God, awesome. Why didn't we think about bagels? I did think about bagels. Oh. I just didn't bring bagels. So, I guess the bad news for us yeah. is it's not available at a grocery store in Texas. Right. We can order it, and yeah. it's available on Amazon, right, which, okay, now that I saw that, there you go, free shipping over 35 bucks. So that makes sense. But if you just happen to be in, let's see, Athens, Alabama. <laughs> Excuse me. I oh, is, yeah, is it getting to you now? Me. Went up my nose. Uh, you can get it at UG White Mercantile. Uh, in Seaverville, Tennessee at Mountain Brothers General Store, uh, Madison, Wisconsin at Brennan's Market. wonder if that's anything to do with my friend Kevin Brennan. Uh, Brooklyn, New York at ALC Italian Grocery. Do Just, Italians eat a lot of honey? Um, you know, that I do not know. I don't, I don't picture honey as being an Italian thing. Who do you attribute eating honey? Other than the Aztecs or Egyptians. Well, you just read that it was like Hispanic. It was Mexican. Yeah, I don't normally associate no. Mexicans with honey either. Oh, I mean, your okay. wife's Mexican. Does she eat a lot of honey? No. 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 But mind you, she, she also can't speak Spanish, so probably True. not the best sample. Right. Uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota at Bench Pressed. In White Bear Lake, Minnesota at Sweet Life Lane. In... In Denver, Colorado, at Wish Gifts. Mm. Now, Denver, Colorado makes sense. It's like, you got a little bit of THC in you, and all of a sudden your your sweet tooth is kind of giving you a hankering. Then, uh, yeah, you go there. But obviously, you can get it shipped to you, so that's obviously the best way to do that. I but wonder if they do THC-infused honey. Maybe they should. In Colorado, they should might probably try that. Yeah, but I, I think they're based in like Minnesota or something like mm. that. So I don't know what the the rule is in Minnesota. So I'm gonna hit the. Uh, our products are available at Premier Independent Retailers, which we just read off. Uh, select restaurant partners, which mm. they're not on here, and via Amazon. So let's click our little Amazon link here. Let's see. Uh, Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, eligible for Prime. So that's good. Then you got this chick on here eating pizza with the honey on there. Uh, drizzle it on raw veggies, fresh fruit, corn, cornbread, chicken wings. Uh, they already mm. figured that out. So you didn't discover that yourself. Yes, and vanilla ice cream. Oh, I don't know that. But maybe. It is perfect for grilled meats, chartoucherie. Chir I hate that word. <laughs> And cheese boards. We recommend getting creative with it. So we're on the right track there. It's my nose run now. Yeah. Well, mm. Okay. So it has medicinal values. Mm -hmm. Okay. So seriously, I mean, it, it's some good stuff. Uh, medicinal as in if you're hungry, it makes you less hungry. Well, not only that, but if, you're, if, if your nose is stopped up, apparently honey. it'll, you know, open that up. Yeah. So, I mean, good stuff though. Mm. I mean... I just made myself yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah, mm. you did. Thank you for making me one. Uh, You're welcome. 
No. You've still got some honey on the table if you want to go yeah, for that. I know. Well, <clears> we, ha- we have no napkins or anything in here. There's still a beer stain. Maybe clear it up with your, clean it up with your phone screen. Mm. It won't make it any dirt, yeah. Okay, so here's what's weird. Mm. So you know how honey is normally like really sticky? Yeah. Like you get it on something and you just feel like you can't get it off of that. I just literally did that rubbing my thumb on the table and just kind of, you know, rub my fingers together and they're not sticky. Mm. That's weird. Mm. Don't you find that kind of weird that it's not sticky? I don't normally spill it on objects and rub it off to really do a comparison. So maybe we should get some normal honey and, you know. I don't want to leap to conclusions. No, oh, that's a good point. Because they keep telling us to follow the science. So without actually spilling regular honey, I can't. Yeah. Comment. Should we have actually brought in regular honey mm. and compared it? No. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts on what you want to try this ghost honey on now? Um, I mean, you already talked about the the chicken wings and mm. and making you like a barbecue, like a honey bagels, barbecue sauce. I think I'm going to put it on some. I think I'm going to buy some plain bagels. Definitely put it on that. Taste fantastic in tortillas, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and make even some chicken if wings the tortillas are a day past being yeah. good, mm. yeah. right? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely try some chicken wing. Try and make a chicken wing uh, sauce out of that. Yeah. No, this is some good stuff. I mean, it really is. So, uh, and we, I, I can imagine drizzling it on some particular types of pizza. Like I said, some of the Hawaiian ones or some of those right. kind of like a little bit more different flavored ones. I yeah. can't imagine putting it on a pepperoni pizza, but you know, like I said, eh, so. you never know though. Mm. You never know yeah. until you try it, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, seriously, folks, go check out Ghost Honey available on Amazon, the uh, grocery stores that we read off. Uh, one good thing about honey is you can put it in the pantry, the cabinet, or whatever. It doesn't go bad. Yeah. And I'm, if it crystallizes, you can just heat it up, and it will automatically right, go back to right. its original So, I mean, you've had structure. two tortillas. Mm-hmm. I've had one. Uh, we had our spoonfuls. And seriously, it looks like we haven't even used anything out of this bottle. Uh, so, super great. Want to thank the folks from Ghost Honey for sending this to us. We'll have links in the uh, descriptions and everything. Uh, just as a you know full disclosure, all they did was send us this. We're not getting paid anything to say what we're saying about this. This is literally they just sent us a bottle of this and said, "Hey, try it." And so that's what we're doing. I mean, it's it's good stuff. It really is. So please check it out. And maybe market it next year around Halloween ghost. Oh, maybe you should be in charge of their marketing. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of work. Goes, d- goes down well at seances and that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, mm. no, that's true. And if you're into necromancy and that type of stuff, what better snack to have? Yeah, there you go. Mm. And then if the ghosts are like moving stuff around, mm. you could... <clears throat> Pour honey all over the place to kind of slow them make, down. Yeah, but this isn't a sticky. This is better than the uh, plot for the remake of the new Ghostbusters movie, by the way. Yeah, mm. pretty much. Mm. Which I did see over the weekend, by you the did? way. And we need to talk about that, but let's not do it on this episode. But mm. that will do it for this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd. Please check out Ghost Honey and the uh, website heartsoulheat.com. Give them a, a check, look it up on Amazon, or if you're in one of those, like, I don't know, what was it, like six, seven cities, mm. stop by, grab some of that. Uh, it was good stuff. Yep. And that will do it for this episode of The Wolf and the Shepherd, and we will catch you on the next one.